Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Architects 3D Printing. In this episode we're gonna study the seventh tab of the Cura Custom Settings menu, that is the Cooling tab. If you have not seen yet the previous episodes, you can do it clicking here in the top right corner or in the links in the description. Tuning the cooling settings, you will be able to improve your prints from here to here. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. But before starting, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, clicking here in this little Architects 3DP icon. If you do it, you will help us growing and continue creating new content for special viewers like you. Okay, so as always, I'm gonna start importing an STL file in Cura, and this time it's gonna be this ultimate bridge test for cooling settings that I've designed, and you can download the STL from the files repository in our webpage at architects3dp.com slash files, or you will also find them linked down in the description. So we'll drop it into the canvas, we'll change the view from solid to layer view, and we will slice it pressing the button prepare. Now make sure you have these options activated. Layer height 0.2 mm, infill 20% and a grid pattern, speed 60 mm per second, cooling disabled, generate support disabled, and for bed adhesion a brim of 3 mm. Now we'll print it with these settings to see what happens. It has been printing for at least 30 minutes, so we're gonna go and check how is it going. Wow, that's how your printer makes bridges if you don't have the print cooling activated. The layer cooling will help your printer cooling the filament right when it comes out of the nozzle, providing a better finish in almost every print. Next, we're gonna activate it and analyze the options that are hidden to see what else can we do with it. And once configured, we will make the same print, but with the cooling settings activated to compare the results. So back in Cura, we'll activate the option Enable Print Cooling and another option will appear, that is Fan Speed and it's set to 100%. It will control the speed of the fan. Normally you'll be using a 12 volts fan that will have different RPM depending on the model you are using. For example, in this machine we are running a Noctua NF-A4X20 FLX which at full speed runs at 4500 RPM. So with this percentage you just have to do the simple math. And for example, at 100% it will be spinning at 4500 RPM and at 50% it will be spinning at 2250 RPM, etc. Okay, so let's jump into the settings visibility menu to see what else can we tune, as always clicking in the setup wheel. The first two options are the ones we already had activated, but the fan speed includes two sub-options I'm gonna try to quickly explain you why I don't like to use them as well as the option below them. Regular maximum fan speed threshold will control the speed of the fan that will be used depending on the time spent in the layer. If we set it to 30 seconds, if the layer will take more than 30 seconds, it will use the maximum fan speed. And if the layer will be printed in less than 30 seconds, it will use the regular fan speed. So I'm gonna make a quick example. Imagine we set the threshold to 30 seconds, the maximum fan speed to 100% and the regular fan speed to 40%. For example, in a big solid layer that is going to take 2 minutes to print, the fan will be running at 100% while it does not really need to and maybe in other smaller and faster layer it will be running at 40% but actually this second layer has two bridges where the speed needed for the fan will be 100% that's why I don't like to use any of these three options and I'm gonna disable them however I found the next one very interesting and it's the initial fan speed if we activate it we'll see that it's set to zero and I recommend you to let it at 0% in almost every case, since the layer adhesion will always be better if the layer fan is deactivated in the very first layer. The next option is regular fan speed at high, with the sub-option to control it with layers instead of millimeters. I'm gonna activate this sub-option to show in which layer the fan will start to spin. For example, in this ultimate bridge test that you can download from architects3dp.com slash files, we don't really need the layer fan until the layer 31, where the bridges appear. We are actually going to set it to 30 to give it a bit of margin. However, the fan won't be turned off until the layer 29. It will gradually increase the speed from the initial fan speed to the regular fan speed at layer 30. So, as our initial fan speed is set to 0 and the regular one to 100%, in the layer number 15 the fan will be spinning at 50%, in the layer number 20 it will be spinning at 66%, etc. 
I personally love how it works, since it will gradually accelerate the speed until it's really needed to be at 100%. Theoretically, it would be better to adjust this layer for every single print, but what I actually do is to set it, for example, to the layer number 10, and I don't use to change it again ever. It will simply work for every print, even if it's not optimized. Alright, so the last three options are also kind of a pack, as we saw before with the threshold for the maximum of regular speeds. And one more time, I don't like to use these options either, and I'm gonna try to quickly explain you why. The options are minimum layer time, minimum speed, and lift head. Well, the first one will control the other two, so I'm gonna try to explain it using a use case where we can have three alternatives. For the example, I'm gonna set the minimum layer time to 30 seconds, the minimum speed to 10 mm per second, and I'm gonna deactivate the lift head option. Imagine this is the layer that needs to be printed. We are using, as usually, a printing speed of 60 mm per second, and this layer will take to print around 37 seconds. As after checking the printing time of the layer, it is 37 seconds, being longer than 30 seconds, we said in the option, nothing will happen and it will be printed normally. In the second case, imagine now we need to print this part that is a bit smaller than the first one and at 60 mm per second it takes 19 minutes to be printed. The slicer will check if the time of the layer is longer than 30 seconds and it's obviously not. So what the slicer will do is to slow the speed depending on the needs. So the time the layer takes to be printed will be 30 seconds, but never printing slower than 10 mm per second. So reducing the speed, it finally managed to make it in 30 seconds, and the speed graphic will be something like that. In the third possible case, imagine now we have to print this layer that has a very low infill, and at 60 mm per second it will take only 10 seconds. After checking if the time is longer than 30 seconds, it will automatically slow the speed until it's set to 10 mm per second. Then the slicer will check again, and printing the layer at 10 mm per second, it will take 23 seconds, so the time won't still be 30 seconds, and then is when the lift nozzle option becomes active. So the layer will be printed at 10 mm per second, and the nozzle will lift until the 30 seconds pass. So it will wait 7 seconds while lifted. Okay, so why I don't like this option at all? It's easy. I am printing in PLA 99% of the time, and PLA is a material that is printed at quite a low temperature, and does not have retractions while cooling down. So simply there's no need to wait for it to cool down. And that's why I never use these options and I'm gonna hide them as well. So at the end we'll keep the option to enable and disable the cooling, the fan speed, the initial fan speed and the regular fan speed at layer options. Now I'm going to print one more time the ultimate bridging test and compare the results with the print we did at the beginning of the video. As you can see, if we compare it with the version we printed before, it looks absolutely fantastic, since we have been able to print all the bridges perfectly. The quality of the prints, even using the same settings, can change depending on the cooling solution we are using, since we could get a different result using our new machine. That is using a blower style fan, and when we did the test, we also got an amazing result as well, printing all the bridges without any problem. Now what I recommend you is to start playing with the options we analyzed today with your 3D printer. And if you enjoyed and learned with the video, please hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel clicking right here in this little icon that they will find in the bottom right corner. To stay tuned with progress updates and future videos, you can follow us on social networks at architects3dp. Finally, if you want to support the channel, you can consider to support us on Patreon from only $1 per month, what will make us extremely happy and will also give you nice rewards that you can check in our Patreon page navigating to patreon.com slash architects3dp or clicking in the link in the description. Okay, so as always, see you guys in the next video.